Okay, we're going to work on the oil and gas lines now. So we've got the original oil line here. We're going to change out the rubber seals on this. So, the best way to do that is just to pull them off and swap them around. You just take a small screwdriver and poke them in there. Most of the time he's coming here like that and they'll come out. Depending on how old and hard they are. So it gets it rotated sideways a little bit and then you pull it out. Maybe the new one's right here. goes in there like that and tighten it down and you're good to go. That one's more petrified, it's coming out in pieces instead of easily. Wads of crap is what that is. That was definitely petrified in there. If you get to rotate, it'll come out, but. This one here is just basically just wadding it up. Everything's rotating. Starting to free up a little bit. And that one came out in pieces. <laughs> Threads still look good, that's all that matters. Rubbers are over here. All right, you always want to have a tube sticking out through the line just a little bit. Okay, that should go in there, hopefully, with no issues. It looks like something might actually fit on the bike. Amazing. Of course you couldn't see any of that, but you know, so it just drops right in there like it's supposed to. I'd still like to see if there's an oil pressure on this vehicle. Be nice. Shovels in a little bit further than normal. Appears to be room to do that. That one started. I just need to bend it up a little bit to get the nut to start. There it goes. Yeah, around my finger. And with my half of that. Now that's the original line to use these on 63 to 65. That'd be on big twins, like panheads. Not sportsters. 
or sprints in 50s on them big bikes. Okay, this is our gas filter. I already took it apart and blew it out. Had a bunch of dried gas in it. So that just goes in here, on here. And it doesn't seem to be very happy about going on there. Oh. The original parts you think they'd fit together better than that. Yeah, it's brass on brass, so. They're going to form to each other, but we need to put a little bit of oil on there to make sure they don't uh, gall up on the way to forming themselves to fit. Nine sixteenths. Okay. Not sure what that's supposed to be, so I'll have to figure that out. Okay, this is the original gas line that came on the bike. I don't think it's the original heart of the big kink in it like that. Might be, who knows. Same rubber style fittings or seals. That one was kind of petrified. Just like crap. That is sharp. These are brand new James seals, but they're hard as a rock. Damn. It's about a tool. Pushes them on, see? Didn't hurt my fingers as much. These are getting kind of raw after a week of solo working on this bike. You can see how it's all petrified in there. <clears throat> Blow on that a little bit of air pressure. Make sure it's good to go. So I need to get this out of here. Yeah, it's, it's unscrewing. Oh, amazing. I didn't think it was going to move. It's one of the things I jammed into a nut. It has built in threads. See, it was threaded in there, see. If you can get it to rotate, it'll unscrew. Alright, I'm going to give this a quick blow job, see how it works. Make sure it's open. It had more of that petrified gas in there. We got a brown haze in the air around here now. I guess I should have brought my gas mask with me today. Oh well. It's good for clearing out your lungs. This one's hard as a rock too. I'll use my tool again. There, it works good that tool. Alright. We're flying. Things are going too easy. We know this isn't going to fit a damn thing. Now, which way is this supposed to go? Usually it wraps around the cylinder. I'm not sure which side goes what. This isn't going to work too good through here, so we'd be going this direction. That's not the right way. So I'm thinking if it goes to the carburetor, this probably goes along the cylinder and up to the petcock. Probably goes this direction. So this would go through here. Not quite. I'm gonna go around the other side. Works a lot easier for 
on this side. We do have a problem with that bracket being in there though. It's kind of in the way of the gas lines here. But when you mount it up like that, it does get off it enough it might work. sure how that's going to work until I get gas tanks on it. Ah, it's tight. Can't do gas tanks until we get a seat on it. See how the T-bar goes right on here. Here's missing the bushing and stuff that goes with it. Seat post is right here. The Zerk for lubricating is way down in there, which I didn't lube before I put the motor together. So I have to go way down here and grab a grease gun and do that. That's a lot of work, so we'll skip that for a while. <laughs> it's only a little loose. It needs a bushing. All right, the gas tank's bowl is right on these two holes here. The seat goes here. So until you put the seat on here, big T-bar on here, you have to pull the tanks on and off. I don't want to pull the tanks on and off, so we'll have to work around that problem. So we got the fuel system hooked up into the here. The line's right over here. Kind of a, not bent too good. So it appears that we have a lot of clearance issues here. So I'm not sure where the top of the uh, petcock is going to hit. We are going to do a little bit of bending to get it off of the mousetrap here, and not rubbing on the cylinder. You have to kind of bend things out and over. And so right now this needs to go. It needs to be bent like that get it off of that bracket. Then I usually put something between my fins here like my fingers and bend it back a little bit like that. Puts more of a curve in it. And this here should be pointing more direct. Bend this up a little bit. There, something like that. See, look at all the paint we just chipped. Not even trying we did that. Push on it. There. Kind of get some clearance on now. Of course, now I gotta retouch up the paint. So I think this petcock is still, I think it needs to be more over here, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I rebent it a little bit, so now it's clearing some stuff. So you get a mouse trap goes back and forth like this. And right now we're clearing all that stuff. So right now we're in a good spot as long as this is close. And I just bend this back and forth until it's where it needs to be. So we don't know where that's going to be yet. That seal is tight. All right, get that down a little bit. I got my little portable gas tank here. So I'll blow that thing out. So we got to put that thing on here like this. Bang, bang, bang. Tighten that down. Ah, there's a ratchet. Okay. I've got a 
fuel tank. Gotta rotate that around to wherever that's gonna hang. I did not put a clamp up there. I don't think we need one. Alright, so we're gonna just hang this thing up off the handlebar up here someplace. Probably like right there is a good spot. up here. Probably some kind of a fancy bow I could use to work better when I'm doing, but yeah, it'll work. I get the perfect angle. All the fuel collects here doesn't go in the motor. <laughs> All right, bend that a little bit differently. That's why you have a piece of wire on there. Okay, now we got our downhill angle. We just put a little bit of fuel in here, let it drain around. I don't have a cap anymore. I'll have to live with it. All right, so that should be able to let us get some fuel in the bike to start it. So I need some spark plugs. These aren't going to work for running purposes. They're good enough for what we're going to do right now. I want to spin the motor through and try to get some oil pressure before I start it. What are you doing, Scooby? He's over there looking for more rats. He's digging around everywhere. What are you doing, Scooby? Get a rat down there? Where are you going? You going that way? Is there a rat in there? Where's that rat? Got a rat in there? Get that rat. Go get him. Where's he at? Yeah, there's one back there. Get him. Hurry up. Go get that rat. Get him. He's going to go find one someplace. He's looking. He's going to find one one day. We don't know when that's going to be, but he's going to find one. Okay, I got to hook up the battery right now. I got this FX uh, soft tail battery in here. Sportster, all kinds of names for it. This is the early one, so the posts are in the correct spot to go on this bike. This has more cranking power than any of the stock batteries that fit on this bike. This is those new uh, UASA GYZ things. This thing's got like yeah, there is 320 cranking amps. Yeah. I think the best one Harley had was like 280 on their big fat FLT battery that went across here. But anyway, this has the post. We can put them right into here. The owner is going to make some wood stuff to support this and then put the stock covers over it. I'll let him deal with all that. I'm not doing it. So we got to just get the uh, hardware. Right here comes with stainless steel screws so they don't corrode. I'll go ahead and put those on here. So I've got a battery cable right here. Post. This battery takes no space here. You can just put the bolt right into the post. It's got a nice big brass nut encapsulated into the lead post so it doesn't melt off like the old batteries used to do. They're flush mounted so you don't have to have no space here. That's what I like. You go either across the top like this or down the back side or wherever you need to go. But they use metric nuts for some reason, bolts. I don't know why. American part. I think we should have American hardware in here. Connect the positive one first, it doesn't arc when you touch against everything. And you can tighten them pretty good, see? It's got a nice big brass post in there, so it's good. See this one here, all the headlights are on. Turn the ignition off. This one here, the post is wrong. So this battery wire has a big hole in it, which is not correct. It's not going to have full cranking power. It's also a hard ass cable, not a good one. So we'll let the owner decide what he wants to do for battery and cables and that. He might change it to a different battery, I don't know. For me, this is just a mock up for now, so we're going to do a load test and see if these batteries are any good. How's that? So if you buy this new tested battery, it'll be extra money if it's tested. 
not used to test it. Okay, that's bolted on there good. So that should be enough to run with. Ooh, look at those lights. They light right up this time. Switch is working better now with full battery power. Yeah, the headlight even works. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, switch isn't the best in the world. See, the light comes and goes as we wiggle the switch. Yeah. Might not be the best quality switches in here. Probably got a little corrosion going in there. We'll just put a little of the CRC multiple purpose lubricant and corrosion inhibitor. So we've already inhibited the rust into there. Will it inhibit the rust so it'll break free and not do it anymore? Of course, we already got the battery cooked up, so that's okay. Shouldn't be any issues squirting, squirting juice in here. Somewhere up under there's post. Oh, look at that! That's like that's like butter. Oh, that's that's like a quarter of the effort now. That's almost like how they're supposed to work. Yeah, I lubricated light bulbs too. <laughs> oh, that works real free. I wonder if you had a switch in this thing. Oh, we've got a key switch. Yeah, we'll lubricate that too. There you go. I don't know if you have a key for it, but we just lubricated the key switch. So, yeah, I squirted a little bit of juice down inside the tumbler unit there. Look at that. That works nice and free. Look at the headlight comes on now. Look at that. Wiggle around and see it stays on more than off now. See, now it doesn't stay off all the time when you wiggle it. Yeah. Keep breaking in all these posts, it might not do that at all now. Need a little bit of Harley vibration there to fix it. See, there's a big post that goes under there, see it? Wobbles back and forth. Yeah. Got to get the corrosion worked off of that thing. Who knows how many years this thing's been sitting. Yeah. All right. And that's enough playing. Of course, you do all of that after you put the put the power to it. That's how you're supposed to do it. Okay, so I want to see if we have any light going out. We have an idiot light down here. Our sender. So theoretically, if it gets oil to it, we should know it. Now, the other thing we can do is we can see if there's any return oil over here. Ooh, there's actually oil in there now. Look at that. See, there's actually oil on the dipstick now. That's a plus. All right, there should be some oil in the tank. Ooh, it's got, it's got stuff in there. Now, this is the return line right here. Camera's too far out. So this should squirt oil back to the tank once it gets oil pressure. So let's see if this thing will actually start. I mean if it'll get oil pressure. Now I already put the spark plugs over here into the coil. They're hooked up and laying over here, so they're gonna just short and not short the coil out. Unlike before when a dumbass did that. Alright, let's see what happens here. Now we have no gas in it, so it's not going to start. We're just looking for oil pressure, is all we're looking for. No, we're not seeing any oil pressure yet. Scooby. Ooh, 
light just went out. The light went out. Right. One more time. <laughs> How long does it stay? Oh, it stays off for a while. That's a good sign. <laughs> Building oil pressure. Look at that. It's all oh, that's good. Oh, it holds pressure. And we have no return back here yet. It was smoking back here a little bit. The this cable's hot. How about this cable? This one's not too bad. This one's hot. Heat means it's bad connection. Post is getting warm too. This one's good. This one's making heat. See, it's got that big hole under the cable, so it's only got a little bit of contact. That makes heat. It's hot up here too. This, ooh, that is hot right there. That's hot. That's a bad cable. Yeah, that thing. You want to touch on? You want to hold on to that bolt? That thing is toasty. And if it's tight. Oh, it's tight. Uh, tighten up some more. That's had a bad connection right there. It's got that same big hole in it, so this is a bad cable. We'll have to see if we can find a better cable for them. All right, let's see how long before it goes out. <laughs> yep, there it goes. That's good. Got no return though. It's pumping oil in the motor, but we're not getting any, any return yet. <laughs> nope. She's dry. Is it dropping? Mm, I smell burnt electrical. It's hot. Turn that off. Give it a rust break. Let's go over and see what happens to the starter motor over here. Solenoid. That's ah, not too bad. This stuff's all holding up pretty good. Yeah, it's only 100, maybe 100 degrees at most. It's cold in here, so it's not much. It's, it's warm, it's just not anywhere near hot. And the starter motor down here. A little bit hard on the solenoid, but not much. It's still pretty cool. They don't care. Can't get the cable under there, feel the cable. So only this negative ground is a problem. This thing sucks. Well, this cable is horrible cable. It's got the same cable for the uh, hot wire, but it's not hot. This one's hot. It's hottest right here. It's hot there, but it'll burn you up here. It's hotter. So. That's a big loss of cranking power when you got hot. If you got something that's making heat like that, you're losing cranking power. The rest of the system's working good. So we still got no oil pressure or no oil return yet. So let's hit it some more. Squirt all over his boxes. Clean the, clean the stick them off. The brand new covers on there. We got to make sure they stay clean. We only use best tiles too for cleaning stuff. I'm sure, that makes no difference. That light came back on. <laughs> No oil return. We'll work on that. All right, so we'll let everything kind of cool off, let the oil do its thing. We're trying to get the lifters to pump up oil. I don't know if they are or not, so we'll have to see. I didn't look at the spark either. I wonder if the spark was sparking. It was sparking earlier. Let's see if we put a spark plug right there, we can see it. Where's the other one at? 
Well, it was buried over here someplace. Here it is. All right. See, now we can see if the sparks are sparking. Turn off the light so we can see the spark in the darkness. So we got one down there and one right there. Let's see how good the spark is. <laughs> Be good. Five, ten count, eight, ten count, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, twenty seconds. Did we break the bulb? <laughs> it should have come on a long time. Yeah, ain't no way it's got oil pressure that long. Maybe we blew the ball out already. I think we broke the sender. Too much oil pressure. Huh. That's weird. That light is not working anymore. It's hard to believe that bulb isn't back on. Well, I've never had to take five minutes to get the oil pressure back in a bike before. I'm thinking there's something wrong with that bulb. Yeah, that one appears to be working. Let's see if that's the problem. Nope. Not the bulb. Yep, definitely not the bulb. Boy, that's a bright one. All right, so something broke on the oil cinder. We no longer have an idiot light. I broke it. That didn't take me long. All right, let's see what's going on here with the wiring. Oh, there it is. I don't know. There's only one thing to do. Lubricate the hell out of everything. It's hard to see what I'm doing. The camera's too low. I don't know what it was, but it's back working again. There's five, eight, twelve, fifteen. There ain't no way it's fifteen seconds. Yeah, something's something is not working electrically. Oop. Yeah, we don't want to see that bulb doesn't come back on. Hmm. That's down here, cinder. I don't know if the center's bad or the uh, electrical up here, because it seemed like we wiggled it up here, it worked again. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Yep. Alright, well, I don't know if something's wrong with it. I have to figure that out too, but he can work on it by himself, maybe. Let him break it. All right, I'm supposed to get it run, not fix everything, right? Okay, I want to get the uh, air cleaner on here, cover. I'm going to use a stock air cleaner. Oh, he's got one of them high-performance crappy filters. Don't do a damn thing. We might have to do an upgrade on that. But I do like the cover. That looks nice. It even tells you you're supposed to clean it every now and then, see? Doesn't look like it was clean this week, though. Yeah, these here don't do a lot of cleaning. So we're not going to use this piece of crap. No stinking way am I using that thing. Okay, that goes right there. Just like that. And there's the bracket. 
scares of this thing. Oh, look what I found. One T-bar. Seat T clevis pin. That's good. That was a good find. That goes way back here on the seat T. Yeah, that was a good find. Glad to see that. Now yeah, there's the missing part that was needed. Right there. And the lights are off. So this is the center bolt mount for the air cleaner. So it goes right over here. Probably more like this. Hopefully it goes like this. I hope it goes this way. What's up, Scooby? Scooby's back. Are you all tired? No more rat hunting? Taking a rust break? He needs a breather. What are you doing? You getting tired over there? Are you tired? That's it. Knock the camera over. Yeah. That's a good boy. Yeah, Scooby's doing good. Scooby's all worked up. All right, get on my way. Get on my way. That's it. Knock the camera over. Yep. Just push it out of the way. Don't worry about it. It's in your way. Just shove it away. Okay, now these take a little lock tab to hold them in. Take little bolts, little hex head. Somehow these are supposed to work on here. I don't know how you're supposed to use a lock tab on something like this. I sure wouldn't want it inside the motor like that. That's stupid. I don't suppose they had the damn thing underneath it like that. That's probably how they were doing it. That seems kind of stupid. That might be how they do it. Yeah, appears to not fit very well. Come on, Scooby, look out. Stepping on Scooby's toes. There it goes. Well, he figured it out. It wasn't that hard to do. Now, if these bolts go in the motor, it does a lot of damage. So make sure you do something. Lock tight, lock tab, something. Star washers work good too. Regular washers do not. They just fall in the motor. There you go, that goes like that. Alright. Quarter drive rafter kit over here and get to it. Nope, not that one. It is three A's. Yep, it's not metric. Good. Tight. 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 All right, I'm not going to lock those down just yet because they might have to tear it back apart. That goes right there. And a little screw to hold it together. So we're going to have to get ourselves a, an air rope cleaner to go on here. Well, that screw's got some definite issues there. There, look at that. Looks perfect. And that's how they're supposed to look. But this is not what we're putting back in there. No way are we putting that back in the back. I have some nice uh, real, air, real air filter elements that go in there, K&N style. They're not K&N, they just look like it. Okay, when I start these up, I want to be able to see, so I take this back off. We got to see if the fuel flow is in there, in case it didn't start.
Okay, we've got to be able to adjust the carbonator by putting a long screwdriver in there. So let me get a few tools and I'll be back.